Yeah. What up, folks? It's the most negative one. It's your boy, BQ. And we're going to talk hidden gems, the hidden gems impact episode. And as usual, on brand, I'm dropping this episode later than I would like to. Again, was fighting with StreamYard the last couple days. Wanted to get this knocked out. This site is driving me crazy right now, but... Right now we're uh, we're on and popping. We're gonna get this. Uh, we're gonna talk this hidden gems episode uh, real quick. Now I, I did watch IPWF. I mentioned this already. I watched I watched the Mexico shows, and I'm kind of like, man, do I want to review those? Because they're just uh, I almost didn't even want to review this one, but I haven't done a impact episode review in a little bit. So why not? Why not get into Hidden Gems aka the BTI Super Show? I know only one match was BTI, but it really felt like a giant episode of BTI to me personally, and it was decent. It was um it was okay. Obviously, I've been real critical about how they handle Post Bound for Glory every single year with the silly episodes, the best dubs. And the thing is, nobody watches the episodes. That's the problem. Like if you want to put these this stuff out and the viewership remains the same, awesome, but it doesn't. So it is a little bit damaging. But with that being said, we're starting to get a little bit more momentum for Hard to Kill. Uh, many of us were have been upset with uh, just the lack of momentum, at, you know, lack of announcements. But then, like, you know, every once in a while, they give you something. And that that's really what we want. We want a little more consistency. It doesn't mean that every single day you have to be posting a surprise or something, but you have to get creative and get us engaged. And that hasn't been happening, but um, you know, when they do do something, when they do drop some news, it's been, um, it's been good. And it's gotten, it's gotten that, that, you know, that chatter going a little bit on social media and that's what we want to see. So uh, I will have a separate upload talking about uh, Jade Chung uh being the ring announcer i'll have a separate episode talking about uh scott demore's big announcement so uh, do not ask me in the comments what i think of those things i will get to those a little bit later so we're just going to get into hidden gems here we're going to run through it really really quick just kind of give you my general thoughts because it's just a throwaway episode but why not talk about it um i'm convinced that this episode was put together to, to kill me uh they played we own the night like 50 times uh the video game sound every 15 seconds um man it started I, i'm telling you the show started with we own the night and i'm like here we I, here we fucking go and then the video game sound and then hannafin and raywald to we own the night again i tell you with this pro- production upgrade that's coming they are, they are, it, it is coming in 2024, not a minute sooner. And I tweeted that out. And of course, some people like, well, it's going to happen in 2024. They said, okay, I fucking get that. I'm not expecting brand new graphics and, and all this shit. But I mean, and then people are saying, well, this, they recorded the, these episodes five months ago. I'm like, but did they edit them five months ago? Because you got to edit the whole thing as a show to get the volumes right. So so you're still giving us the crap video editing and the crap audio editing into the mono file. And I, I, I mean, that's what I'm saying. They, they've addressed this. They have acknowledged at least four or five months ago, hey, we need to upgrade. But it's like it's the same old, same old every episode. And that's what this was. Lots, lots of we on the night. Um, I, I, I never want to hear this song again. Like, is this the last episode of the year? Because I know I'm not going to watch the best of. So, I am hoping I've heard we on the night for the last time. <sighs> I'm telling you, if I that first episode of TNA comes on in in January and that fucking song is there, I will light myself on fire, throw myself out the window, drag my balls a- across three miles of broken glass go find a homeless man tell him to fart in a bucket and sniff it (sighs) opening match was alan angels versus samurai del sol this was my favorite favorite match on here i have good memories of samurai del sol because that that 
oh man, that that little period of NXT where it was developmental, but it was also like kind of a crystal ball into the future. You know, Tyler Breeze was there and Neville and all these things. What a great freaking time. That was, man, to me at that time, I don't even know what the period of time was for that six months, a year. I just thought that was the best wrestling show in the world back then. Um, so I have good, I have good memories of, of Samurai Del Sol as Kalisto, part of the Lucha Dragons in NXT versus Allen Angels. Um, and I, I tell you, I still will never understand. They broke Allen Angels away from the design. You're thinking he's going to be a baby face and he breaks off and he's just a heel and there's no explanation to it whatsoever. He's one of my favorite wrestlers on the roster. He was one of my favorite wrestlers before he came to Impact. So um, enjoyed this quite a bit. We got so this was like a BTI match. We had Jay Chung doing the commentary. Again, I will talk about her in a different episode. We had Jim Miller. Did I say the commentary? Jay Chung was doing the ring announcing. Gia Miller was doing commentary. And I think she sounds I got to know, let me know your thoughts in the comments. I think she sounds a thousand times better on commentary than she does out backstage because backstage is still a little robotic. I mean, she's come a long way, but on commentary, it's natural, a little jokey, but that's, that's kind of what BTI was. Like if you used to watch AEW dark at all, it was very similar where it was like really, really light uh, with the commentary and the humor. It wasn't, it wasn't like bad humor over the top. It was just light natural conversation that's kind of how bti comes off and i thought i i think she's a good partner for hannafin on commentary because uh, even though hannafin hannafin and raywall do a good job they both you, you know one of my big criticisms on uh, D'Lo and Stryker was that it just it was really really fake and rehearsed and and just wasn't natural. Like they, they have these two have a little element of that to them. Uh, you know, Tommy Hannafin always sounds like he's reading the news. It's ra- it's raining cats and dogs out there. Um, you add Gia in there and she's really really natural and it it by nature made Tom a little bit more natural as well too. So I wouldn't be mad if they added her to the team in 2024 and made it a three-person booth because you're bringing old girl in to do the backstage stuff or at least i know that i know they signed sam i can never remember her last name she did nwa mlw she's really good really really good uh she's very attractive she's not like the like real sexy look for a backstage person very classy looking uh but she's an incredible backstage interviewer and I think that the company would be better suited for her to do that backstage and for Gia to move to the booth. So we'll see if that's what they do. I don't know, but um, again, I enjoyed this one quite a bit. This was a really, really fun match. And then it ended with the uh, Salida Del Sol off the top rope. They said this was Samurai Del Sol's first victory and impact, which blows me away. Cause usually if you've even sniffed the asshole of someone who worked at WWE, you come to impact and you win. So that's crazy to me. That that's that's a, that's a wild. They brought up Allen Angels when he won that Ultimate X for the uh, number one contendership, and then they just had him <laughs> challenge the next episode because it was a throwaway fucking match to begin with. But I think there's a lot they could do with Allen Angels. I think he would be incredible X Division champion. I think he could be kind of similar to what Ace Austin was early on that kind of just entertainment, you know? So a uh, really good opening match. This was the only BTI type match. I was misinformed, not misinformed. I, I understood um, initially that these were all like BTI matches, but that wasn't the case. Uh, and then we got, we own the night. And then uh, we got Giselle, Sean, Savannah Evans versus MK ultra. So this is before their tag team champions. This is before they are MK Ultra. They're still feeling each other out. Uh, they both came down with different uh, theme music. I feel like I've seen this match 90 times. Uh, someone told me they've only wrestled once before, but I, I feel like I feel like these four have wrestled 
uh, like at least a hundred times this year, but I guess I'm, I'm wrong. So, but again, they painted this as MK ultra, but this was prior to them forming a team solid match. Uh, if we see Giselle Shaw on screen or Savannah Evans, we know who's losing, you know, that just, that's just the way it goes. Really great finisher at the end. They did, um, kind of like a BTE trigger and then a double team power bomb, which I don't, is that the finisher they've been using? I feel like they do use a tandem move, but I don't think that's it. But this, um, this like double kind of power bomb thing they did was, was really, really, really good. And it reminded me how, how hot MK ultra was when they started like building them up and pairing them together. Like it, it was some great, you know, I don't want to call it long-term storytelling, but there was, there was a little bit of story to how these guys were feuding feuding over nothing by the way they were just came out one episode brawling through the stands and all that but they were brawling for a while like they just genuinely 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 didn't like each other and then they had the match and then they had mutual respect they formed a team and they were hot they were um they were one of the better parts of the show but then as i mentioned many times they had one of the impact plus shows had them defend the title against like nine other teams in the same match. And once they beat them all, they had no opponents. And now they're, you know, sitting there scratching their vag, like, whoa, what are we supposed to do? Who are we supposed to wrestle? You know what I'm saying? So, but, um, but I did enjoy it. And the team known as MK ultra in the future won this match. Then we started getting, I don't even know the word, (sighs) Diener versus PCO in a street fight. I wrote here in my notes, I do not care. I do remember that they announced this match. And I, I have to go back and correct myself because, you know, I said on Twitter a few times when they, when they're doing a, TV tapings in a certain, you know, market on Twitter, they'll announce a bunch of matches. And I'm, and I've, I've been like, like super critical over that strategy where I'm like, okay, I know you kind of want us to know who's going to be there, but you're telling us the story, you know, the, the middle of the chapter before we get to read the first page. And they did that in a couple instances, but lately when they announce these matches, they're usually, they haven't been aired or they're, plan on, on doing an episode like this or it was meant for BTI or something. I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But um, but when they've been announcing, pre-announcing these matches for the tapings, they've been, they seem to be uh, specific to the arena and the fans there. I remember they did Josh Alexander versus Brian Myers world title match. And I was just, what the fuck is that? And, um, you know, a lot of people came at me, a lot of people saying this is for the live audience. And I'm like, it's still a random fucking title match. Maybe it's not for 100, 200,000 people that are going to watch on DVR and live. But it's still a random ass title match for uh, the Impact fan base. But it's whatever. I don't know if we ever saw that match. No, I feel like it came out on main event Monday or something like that, if that's even still a thing. But anyway, Diener versus PCO. And this is Diener with Angels, who just wrestled earlier in the night, and Khan. Um, man, I didn't give a fl- f- Like an abstinent stewardess, I didn't give a flying fuck. I talk about this nonstop, the fucking street fights. I have no interest in them. Hardcore rules, anything, anything goes. I don't fucking care. OVE came down, uh, missed opportunity not bringing them back as a faction. I mean, not that they ever beat anybody. I think I beat them at one point. But still kind of a missed opportunity because the fans were really asking for them. But I don't know. It was really hard to care because you're getting I – know, I know these are unaired matches, but – Sammy Callahan coming out and OBE people not even part of the company and the design faction. And it's fairly, you know, kind of disbanded for the most part, you know, um, then they did a little video package of Josh and Will Ospreay. And this is just another 
boring Josh Alexander promo. <sighs> Talking about Samoa Joe and AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels. I mean, I'm so sick of this promo. I know he's not the only one who does it. It's it's mainly guys who are like wrestling for the X Division Championship or something like that. They come in and it's the same fucking promo. It's going to be the same shit. I promise you in January, February, March, someone's going to come in and cut the same promo about Samoa and AJ and Christopher Daniels and Angle. and <sighs> Josh recorded this from his cell phone, and that's what I'm saying. They're talking about upgrading the production, but it, I mean, not a fucking second sooner are they doing this. Uh, but it wasn't bad for, for, you know, cell phone promo. I guess, I guess it was okay, but I'm just, it's it just always the same from Josh. It's not a hundred percent. It's like, it's like 75% the same. And then he'll throw something different in there. You know, I'm not going to completely knock him, but I just, I want a story that's not about him being the best of the world and scratching and clawing. And I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what it's going to take to just add something else to him. Uh, but he, I mean, he, yo, he does put on the best ma matches in the company. Everything he does, every time he gets in that ring, it's, it's incredible. So I'm by no means saying him. I, Oh, I'm not a fan of Josh Alexander. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying these promos, Whew, they're rough for me. They're really, really rough for me. Um, but they are improving. I'll give them that. Uh, they're improving. Then we got Johnny Bravo and Dirty Dango, Dirty Dango versus Dreamer and Shanning Decker. Who the fuck is that? And I know someone's going to write in the comments, oh, you don't know him. He wrestled for MLW or something. I don't know. I don't know who that is. Uh, but he, he looked he looked pretty good. Dreamer did not. Um, fat. Uh, Bravo and Dango, it, it was actually the one reason I kind of like this was I was actually kind of enjoying Bravo wrestling because I don't know that he's ever wrestled on screen before. I mean, I think he has like in a really joking manner with with uh, Johnny Impact. But as far as like actually really taking some bumps and do, <laughs> doing a little offense, it was it was uh, actually kind of inter entertaining. I kept thinking he was PCO, though. I was watching a match and he just his his outfit if i would turn away for a second i turn back and and immediately think pco was in the ring but uh bravo and dango versus dreamer and decker so i know um from what i saw on twitter a lot of people didn't really enjoy this just because people are starting to really turn against tommy dreamer and any kind of matches that he does uh, because he always wins but it was okay. It was something, it was a little bit different. Again, I don't know who this Channing Decker is. It sounds familiar. I feel like he's wrestled on the show before, but I mean, I have no idea who he is, but he looked okay. And again, someone's going to get in the comments, act like I'm a fucking idiot because I don't know who that is. Sorry. Uh, they did an Okada package. This was very, very well done. They showed... <clears throat> the uh the green hornet stuff i know he was not the green hornet but whatever his character was i don't know anything about that shit but they're at first they start showing all this shit i'm like i cannot believe they're showing this uh but it was you know the video package was kind of the story like here this is where he went you know um they kind of acknowledge not allowing him to see his full attempt potential you know they they showed a video uh, uh clip of him kind of talking trash from new japan so you know they're, they're doing something something cool here um and and I, i've been really really honest that i don't watch japanese wrestling when they said okada was coming i, I was like was that the guy that rode the bike at AEW recently and um that was kota ibushi and again it's not be it, it's not like a racist thing my wife is asian it, it's just that i i don't know the difference between a lot of these guys and the ones we see, I think, are always so similar to the, you know. That's why I like Kushida being around, because Kushida stands out. Like, these other guys, to me, don't really stand out. Like, I just see the same strong style and the chops and all that. But, you know, obviously, I should have known Okada from TNA's past. It's just, I just really don't pay attention to Japanese wrestling. So, it really takes me 
a minute with some of this stuff. So I, you know, I acknowledge he, he's a big dog and, and it's great uh, that he's coming back and it's going to be cool to see him in a TNA ring, you know, because we got him one way and now we're going to get him another way. And uh, it just, it's going to be really interesting. Another match I liked here was Taylor Wilde versus Deanna Perrazzo. Deanna Perrazzo was the knockouts champion here. And um, good match. It, it was nice to see Deanna Perrazzo win. You know, we've just been seeing her um, get beat like the Pistons the last, uh, the last half year. I wrote in my notes here, Dave Penzer was trying. Uh, he... The, the ring announcing he did here, like he was trying, like he was trying to put some energy into it and make, you know, to, to announce these women differently than he announces everybody else. So uh, I notice when he's trying, I know, I notice when uh, he does switch it up and, and delivers the, the uh, announcements in some kind of unique manner, or at least tries to, you know, so uh, good on him for that. We got Santino on commentary here. I don't know the point of it, why um, the Santino character doesn't really hit an impact because, and I was a fan of his in WWE. And uh, by the way, if you haven't seen his daughter in real life, like it, however you've seen her on NXT or television in general, like multiply that by 20, that, that woman's beautiful. Anyway, the Santino character doesn't quite click because he has to talk too much. Um, he has to, because he's an authority figure, he has to, he can still be goofy, but like there's a lot of the dialogue is serious. And um, how can I explain this? Like for those of you out there who know how to, to do a voice impersonation of someone, you know, say it's King of the Hill and Bobby, take that woman's underwear off your head. And you know how to say phrases that he would say on television. But then if you have to use that same voice to say, um, boy, I, I voted for Donald Trump and he went up against that Joe Biden. And you're just a kind of a bubblegum, shoot, shoe, horse person. My point is when you're just saying random words, random phrases, it's not really your act. It can be pretty hard to, to keep that act going. Um, and granted, that's his own accent. But the he gets lost in the gimmick when he has to be serious. So I think what I said was a, probably a really poor example. Because I'm just coming up with this shit on the fly and I'm tired. I have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about. But... No, my point is, if you know how to impersonate a voice, you know how to use, you know how to say like key phrases from that person. But once you have to start saying other shit, you lose the character, right? That's that's the point I'm trying to make. And I think he loses his character a little bit when he's trying to be serious, and it just doesn't hit. It does not hit. Man, I had to I had to hit pause there. I started coughing, choking on. Whew. Uh, then the main event was Josh Alexander versus Yuya Jabamura. Um, good match. Probably went longer than I would have cared for. But, I mean, Yuya didn't win anything in Impact. And I understand he was on excursion. You're not supposed to come and, you know, win the world title. But for the most part, he just didn't. He wasn't conducive with winning uh, in, in, during his time with Impact. The Joya stuff was a lot of fun. And I was never too offended by his booking, except when they put him like in a number one contenders match for the world title. And I was like, this motherfucker has not won a single match on my TV screen. And he is wrestling for the world title. He has won as many matches, as many, as many singles matches as Jack Price, as Shogun. And he's re he was wrestling for the world title. You know, you know what I'm saying? Um, but th this was actually kind of a fun match. It was a good kind of goodbye match for him. And I know when this match was recorded, a lot of people were confused because they thought he was fired. Why is he wrestling on the next episode? Like, 
it was probably for the live audience, but then they used it for his hidden gems, and it was, you know, it was a good match. It, it actually really, really was. So it just kind of told me that there was probably more they could have done with Jabba Mora, where, like, he just wasn't just losing all the time, but he was still, I don't know, like, part of winning, you know, um, associated with winning people. I think when they put him with Joe Hendry, that worked because he wasn't, you know, he wasn't pinning dudes, you know, but as a team, they were winning matches and that that's why he kind of got some momentum at the end. And it was kind of sad to see him go because he was finally part of something kind of hot, kind of entertaining, you know, and I don't know if I, I believe he wrestles for New Japan, right? I don't know if they they're happy with what he got out of impact, like I think when you go on excursion, for the most part, you're supposed to come back a bigger star than you were. And I don't know that that happened. You could argue it did, but I don't know, man. But this was a fun little match. And uh, this Hidden Gems episode was okay. It wasn't too bad. I could have done without the street fight. Um, again, the Dango and Bravo and stuff, that, that was fine. But I, I could have... I could have done without the street fight. I really, fuck, I really could have done without that. But aside from that, decent episode, um, throwaway episode. They did make an announcement on there, though, that uh, Vikingo was coming. I'm sorry. So they did make that announcement. He was the international star they were talking about, El Hijo del Vikingo. And that'll be fun because he's a lot of fun to watch. Um, it's a bunch of flipping and all that shit, but, but he is really entertaining in the way he does it. And he's very unique. So he's going to be wrestling against Kushida and uh, Chris Saban at hard to kill. Yeah. Three way for the X division championship that Kushida will win. And I'm looking forward to it. It should be a fun match. Should be good. So uh, that's what I got for you guys. We kind of kept a quick under, under half an hour. Um, hopefully my NWA shirt is not offending anybody. I actually love this shirt. Just a, material and all that i wish impact made their shirts like this because i whoever they hire to do their shirts they need to fire and get someone else i freaking hate them hate the, the quality and stuff but this shit right here bam just feels so good so good in my body baby so uh we'll talk to you soon i'm your boy bq i'm out peace